Teams, meaning ownership, knows that stability is important. It is rare for the White Sox to make a move on its executive suite at all. Team president Kenny Williams had been with the club since 1992 and was the general manager of the White Sox World Series championship team in 2005. Rick Hahn had been the general manager since 2013 with Williams moving upstairs. That's a long-running team. They did have success. Both fired this week in a move that is, yes, stunning and also understandable. Let's lend some perspective into a fascinating run in Chicago. Do a little digging in. Let's go back to the glory year first. Kenny Williams is the GM, as I mentioned. Ozzy Guillen is the manager. And it's a case where everything just worked beautifully. Guillen rides the bullpen hard in the playoffs, and it works. Guillen allows his starters to work eight or nine innings in the next round, and it works. They win 11 of 12 in the playoffs. 11 and 12. They went through the defending champion Red Sox and then just wiped everybody out. I point that out because sometimes everything just clicks. And other times, you can't get a break. Over the next seven years, the White Sox won 90, 89, 88, and 85 games in different years. But that was no man's land in those days. They would play just one playoff series over the next 14 years. The first phase of the Rick Hahn era did not work out. He had big decisions to make. He would sell off the Chris Sale White Sox in an effort to rebuild. There were good moves and there were bad, but he reloaded quite well. Here are the White Sox major trades between June of 2016 and July of 2017. Fernando Tatis for James Shields. Obviously disastrous. We know that. But Tatis was not the prospect he'd let her become. But that was Shields after his Padres run. He was done. But check out the Chris Sale, Adam Eaton, and Jose Quintana deals. I'm sorry, that's a haul. You rarely get all that talent back. Michael Kopech, Johan Moncada, Dane Dunning, Lucas Giolito, Reynaldo Lopez, Dylan Cease, and Eloy Jimenez. It's a fantastic return. So 2019 was the last year of the bottoming out. Bottoming out. They lost 89 games, but they were primed to bounce back. Han read that correctly, re-signed Jose Abreu, a great initial signing out of Cuba, and signed Yasmani Grandal and Dallas Keuchel off the free agent market. The White Sox went to the playoffs, but lost to the A's in three games. Now, right after 2020, you might recall the White Sox fired their manager, Rick Renteria, who had done a pretty good job, and brought back the Hall of Famer and the long-retired Tony La Russa. That drew a lot of criticism. But remember this clearly. The 2021 White Sox won 93 games, 93 and 69. They took over the division lead in May, held it the whole year, won the Central by 13 games. 13 games above. So it's not as if the recent White Sox have been a total disaster. That is an excellent season. Did they lose in the playoffs? Yes. By the way, last year, the mighty Braves were so great now. The 111-win Dodgers also lost in the first round just last year. Sometimes in a quick series, you just lose. But these last two years are puzzling. 81 and 81 in a winnable division. And now this inexplicable season. Bottoming just dropped out. A complete collapse, 50 and 77 after a win last night. I've done a few write-ups on this club, and this is a strange performance issue. Very promising core has let them down. Luis Robert has been great this season, but Robert, Jimenez, Tim Anderson, Yohan Moncada have had a lot of trouble staying on the field. Their best players don't play enough. The club also has inexplicable slumps. It could be game planning, it could be bad culture, but there's underperformance everywhere. Here are the core position players with their games played over the last three years. I don't even need some fancy stats. Games played. How about that, Mad Dog? This is Robert's first year topping 100 games. Eloy Jimenez hasn't played 100 since his rookie year four years ago. Moncada played 104 last year, but he's been hurt this year. Tim Anderson missed time last year and this year. He hasn't played 100 in two years. Grandal has passed 100 games for the first time in three years. We've also been saying this for two years. This is not a good baseball team on the field. And even the players they've drafted and successfully developed are not guys who can field or run. Andrew Vaughn, Jake Berger, just traded. Jimenez, they don't field, they don't execute. They rarely look inspired. I'm trying to be kind. You have to remember, in 2022, they were lethargic throughout, and they still had all season to kick it into gear and still make it to the playoffs. In the weakened AL Central, they had repeated chances to jump in late. They were a game and a half back September 10th. Later in the month, they were four back, starting a three-game series with Cleveland. How did they respond? By getting swept and going on to lose eight in a row. But at least everyone got to blame Tony La Russa. This year, a new manager, Pedro Griffal, they opened up the season with an 8-21 and 21 April. Okay, can't blame La Russa for that. When your team is 29th in hitting, 26th in pitching, and 29th in fielding in a 30-team league, you have problems. Their executive team that just got fired, they had their moments and had seemingly built a core of a successful team.